So we're continuing on with uh, Project Tony here. Um, and you can see we've got the initial structure built with um, components. Um, we've started working the roof with the massing tools and the wall tool trick that we showed in the last tutorial. And for some people, this might be relevant. In this project, it's a little bit less relevant, but we're going to show it anyway. And that is getting into the idea of custom texture mapping inside of Revit. So to do that, we need to do a couple of things. First of all, I want to kind of change the appearance of some things here, just so I can start to see some things a little bit better. I'm going to go ahead and turn on shadows. And if you notice how the shadows are actually moving around, that's because by default, Revit has the shadows it's either from the top right or the top left, uh, not actually a sun position. So let's actually go ahead and set up a few things in the graphic display options. So the first thing I'm going to do in my model display is I'm going to switch to wide lines on my silhouettes. I'm, I've got shadows on already, and I'm going to set, instead of sunlight from the top right, I'm going to change this to the summer solstice. And remember the location for this project that we're working through uh, is Ripley, Tennessee. I believe Ripley is actually in here. Maybe not. A little drat. Let's just use something close. We'll do a uh, internet mapping service. And let's just see if we can't type in Ripley, Tennessee. There we go. And we'll say OK to that. And that will grab our latitude, latitude and longitude. So right now we're set for summer, summer solstice at 3 p.m. And I'm going to say OK to that. And OK here. And that's done two things. First of all, you notice a little visual pop on the exterior edge. And that's the wide line setting. And now as I orbit around, the shadows are going to stay locked. Now, the shadows are actually not being cast on anything. I don't have a base in, so it's just dropping the shadows on level one. <coughs> and apologies about the coughing. I'm bat battling a cold, but, you know, we're just going to, I'm just going to try and work through it here. So what we want to do is I'm going to go ahead and add in another wall in level one. Um, just a wall that's not even really in the project, but something that we can start putting a texture map on. So architecture, wall, and I'm going to use the generic 12-inch wall, and we're just going to sort of make this massive stone masonry wall for no good reason here, other than to put a texture map on it. So I'm going to select both of those walls, and we'll attach them to the roof so they at least look like they belong for the moment, even though I'm not wild at all about what they're doing to the project. But that's going to give us a surface to begin putting a texture onto. So when we're working on texture mapping, um, the first thing that we need to do is um, have a really good seamless texture, something that's not going to repeat or tile over a surface. <coughs> and Revit comes with some decent texture maps, but more than likely you're, you're going to quickly run through those and need to create your own. So you can certainly go out and take pictures, um, but there are also some really good websites that do this as well. This is one of my favorites right here. Um, and I want to do a stone wall. So I'm going to scroll down, select stone walls, and let's see if we can pick a reasonably complicated one to turn into a seamless map here. Yeah, something like that. That's a really nice mess right there. Okay, so let's do save image as. And I'm just going to write this directly to my desktop. Okay, so we'll pop open Photoshop. File open. And I'm going to select that. dry stone wall. So the first step that I'm going to need to do is crop the image. 
because again, that green band and the sort of soldier course of the dry stack stone and the base are all going to repeat. So if this texture copies up twice, I'll always see this green band running and this ground plane band running. So I want to go ahead and crop right along this. And this is some really good masonry work, actually. If you notice, I can run my crop right along that horizontal joint and right along this horizontal joint. Now what that means, why I'm happy about that, is when I make this seamless, I probably will have to do very little work at getting rid of that horizontal joint. <coughs> so to make this seamless, what I'm going to do next is filter, other, and offset. And by moving that around, you can actually begin to see. So I'm moving the vertical, and you can see right where the seam is, right through here, and horizontal. And I want to put those roughly in the center. And you can see that horizontal seam right here. I'm going to say OK. And I'm going to zoom in a bit. And I'm going to use this um, healing, spot healing brush. Um, I want a little bit of a feathering. Let's look at sort of my settings on the brush. A little bit of feathering at the hardness, you know, uh, and it depends on which texture you're using. Obviously, the size of the brush is relative to the, the resolution of your image. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and cover this seam. And do this in a couple of passes. And what you're seeing is it's not perfect by any stretch but it sure beats the old day of nothing but the clone tool to fix all this stuff. And if you're old in 3D like I am, trust me, you know what I'm talking about. To fix this texture map might have been, a, I don't know, if you were really good, a 30 or 40 minute process. I sure wouldn't have shown a video of me fixing an entire texture map. It would have been boring to all get out. But let's just go ahead and go through this. <coughs> Excuse me. So you can see a few places left that need a little bit of touch up, primarily on this vertical seam. The horizontal seam is almost completely gone. So I can look at something like that. And really quickly with, this, th with the clone tool, I can just pick those pieces back out. So I'm going to use the Alt button to select my location that I want to copy. And I'm just going to paint that joint right back there, you know, to sort of re-separate those pieces. Let's get that spot there. We'll touch up there. And I'm going to spare you working through all of this because I've already gone through it once. But you can see really quickly I can zip through this and get those items working and make this a really quick and convincing texture map. And you need to spend a little bit of time looking at what Stone actually does to make sure that you're being reasonable um, with how this works out. Um, but, you know, pretty quickly and easily you can redivide and kind of get all those pieces working really, really well again in terms of making a really nice seamless texture map. So one more piece right there. So I've already got that done. You can see just that little bit of work right there has that looking pretty convincing. And the result of that is when I go back and roll this texture map again, you know, I don't see the seam anymore. And that's what we're wanting to get rid of. And we're also wanting a large enough texture map in terms of length and height that we don't see a lot of tiling happening over and over and over again in the image. So let's bounce back into Revit. <coughs> and let's apply that to this wall surface. So I'm going to go ahead and edit the wall type. So right now this is a generic 12-inch wall. And I'm actually going to go ahead and duplicate it and call it stone 12 inch so that I can 
keep track of what it's doing and exactly where it's at. I'm going to edit the structure and then I'm going to edit the material. So I want to build a brand new material and there's probably a masonry in here that I could start with and sometimes I recommend that but a lot of times I really want to start with all of my options available in terms of texture mapping. So usually when I start something new I like to go straight for the default. So I'm going to go to the default and I'm going to duplicate the default. And I'm going to rename it Dry Stack Stone Masonry. And there we go. So you can see right now my only options available are a color for shading, a surface pattern, and a cut pattern. And so what I need to do is I, mean, I need to begin to add some additional assets to put in a texture map. And that first asset is going to be appearance. So I'm going to click on this drop down box and you see a couple of options. Appearance, physical, and thermal. Now the nice thing about this system is that it allows me to add physical properties to run structural simulations, thermal properties to run energy simulations. Not too interested in either one of those right now, but let's do go ahead and load up the uh, appearances. And again, I'm going to start with the default, which is called generic. And I'm just going to double click to add that in. So I've got a generic appearance. I know I'm building a wall type. So this little drop down arrow right here, I'm going to switch to walls. So you can see I have a blank gray wall, not too exciting. Let's say that we want to name this guy dry stack. masonry and keywords stone that way I can find it in a search later whoops my color I'm gonna go ahead and set that roughly to sort of a nice brown <coughs> and let's go ahead and select an image which was on my desktop not where I'd recommend you save your things but um, it's easy reference for me in building these videos. So there's my dry stack se seamless stone. So the next thing that I need to do is I want to look at the properties of this, how often it's repeating. And I can do that off of this drop down list. I'm going to say edit image. And I'm going to scroll down to the size and I want this to be approximately 16 feet by 8 feet in its size so that's going to be calculator 16 times 12 192 in the X 96 in the Y and so now I have an 8 foot tall by 16 foot wide sample done. And now you can start to see, yeah, that looks about right on that wall. Uh, and it's really nice to have that chair there as something for reference. Now I also want to go ahead and add this as a bump map. That's going to give me that little bit of sense of relief um, that the mortar joints are actually going in and casting a shadow. So I'm going to double, I'm going to check the bump map, load the same texture map again, and I need to set my scale again. That's going to be 16 feet by 8 feet. Oh, I need to unlock my proportions there. 16 feet, 8 feet. Um, again, I want those to match exactly. <coughs> that is matching the bump map with the texture map for the stone. Okay. Now, the amount right now, if I really raise the amount up, you'll see it really do sort of some massive damage to, to that wall, make it look really pot, pot marked. If I go negative, it's going to change the value. It's actually going to start, I believe in this case, you have to kind of look at it really carefully. I believe in this case, it's actually pushing the black tones out. You know, if you want to get really good with, if you, if you need to be very precise with your 
bump maps, your best solution is actually turn it into a black and white image and you'll have a little bit more control. But usually for the most part, I find that working with the same image map for both works just fine for my particular use. So I'm going to click Done. So I've got dry stack masonry right here. OK. And OK. And OK. And if you think that that's a little bit complicated, you're right. Um, I would love Autodesk to get rid of about five of those menus and have that all happen in one because it's a little bit nuts. So let's change our visual style to realistic. We should see that texture map load up. And it is. Now notice it's not happening on this wall right now. That's simply because that's the wrong wall type. So if I select this wall, that should be a generic 12 inch wall. There it is, a generic 12 inch wall. Let's change that to what should be a, oh, what did I name that dude? Stone 12 inch. Just like that. And now those are both correctly mapped. Let's undo that really quick. Look at a, at a slightly different method. If I go to modify, I can also use match properties. And I can say I want that and that to match. I think I missed. Let's try that one more time. That should match that. So that's another route to do that. So the last thing that I wanted to show really quickly was if I've got a component that I want to put a texture map on, like let's say these little base guys also want to be stone. I can't just come in and begin to, to immediately texture map those. I actually need to edit them as an in-place model. Then I can select the base, and I can go to my material, dry stack masonry, OK. And that will apply that surface. Now, you'll also notice I've got some errors on this. And you know I obviously need to go back and replace that. You can replace texture maps per surface, and I would need to work on the rotation of this by using the paint tool, which is right here. And I'm just going to put um, a default color on it right here so you can see the difference. By using that paint tool, I can say I want just that surface to be that color. So what I would need to do is duplicate my dry stack stone, work on the rotation so that it lines up correctly when it's mapped, and apply that. So I'll click Finish Model and zoom out. That is the basics of starting with custom texture mapping inside of Revit.